Um, I, I wish I could say that nine games in the middle of June means anything, but, uh, you know, if you just look at it from a very logical perspective, um, that's three games a month for the rest of the season and losing three games a month. Uh, it's, it's not a very difficult thing to do. So, uh, you know, the, the longer they maintain this lead, um, the, the more cushion they're building themselves for injuries and for uh, teams within their division being aggressive at the trade deadline. But the, the reality is I think the Mariners understand organizationally the position that they're in right now. It's a very strong one. And it's one that they want to add to. And if they don't add in a substantive way, it's going to be understandably disappointing. You, you don't sit around uh, when when you've gotten off to a start like this, when you are so good at home. Um, and, and they are so good in that ballpark. Like the, it is it is a horror show if you're coming into T-Mobile and you're you're another team right now because the energy there and the way that the Mariners play at home, um, you got to take advantage of that and and build on that. And I think that's exactly what they're intending to do. Jeff, I know you've talked about Luis Robert with these guys, and you know he's the name being bantered around. But there are a ton of teams out there that might want Luis Robert. Who else? Who yeah. Who else could be a good target if it's not Luis Robert for the Mariners? I think the Phillies are probably the the biggest threat there because they, like the Mariners, have a very good farm system, and they, like the Mariners, have a very acute need for an outfielder, and they, like the Mariners, are a really good team with World Series aspirations. And so uh, I think Philadelphia is probably at the top of that list. You could look at the Los Angeles Dodgers, too. I know that uh, they – you know, they have such a surplus of talent already. Um, and the idea that you're going to add Luis Roberts to the mix and that it's going to make a, a demonstrable difference, I, I think the, the Dodgers may, because of Yoshinobu Yamamoto and Mookie Betts' injuries, take a step back, pump the brakes a little bit, and say, okay, let's assess where we are. Is this a year where we want to go full send? And maybe they make the argument that, you know, we're getting about the best that we're going to get out of Tyler Glass now, and Gavin stone has been a great surprise, but we're going to make the playoffs. So, uh, you know, let's let us let the talent that we have right now, let's see if that's enough. That's certainly a possibility, too. And then, then you've got sleeper teams. Like, there's, there's no better fit for Luis Robert than Kansas City, honestly. Um, the Royals need an everyday center fielder. They need a middle-of-the-lineup bat. Problem is, I'm not sure that they have the prospect capital to go and get him. But one thing I do know is that the White Sox are looking for bats. And uh, I have said this on this program before, and I will say it again. I'm not sure there's a better organization in baseball when it comes to bats in the minor leagues than the Mariners. The, the farm depth that they have on the offensive side, considering especially where they were even two years ago, is just tremendous. And it's going to be the sort of thing that allows them to go and make a move like getting Robert if they want. Can you win a world? Can the Mariners win a world series with their current 40 man roster? Yes. Hmm. That's how good their pitching is. I just, I, I believe in the pitching and I believe in October, even though you're facing uh, the teams that have the best lineups in the world um, that the Mariners pitching can neutralize that. But, but just because they can Brock doesn't mean that they should go with this 40 man roster. It is, it is a flawed group and uh, there are issues. And I, I really worry about the strikeouts in October. I really worry about that hindering their offense and, and putting just immense amounts of pressure on their pitchers to throw zeros up because uh, as it stands, as it's currently constituted, I, I don't think this is going to be a high scoring offense, even though they've put up some runs in, you know, recent weeks. Jeff, is there a good bat outside of Luis Robert that the Mariners could use? Maybe better contact, less strikeouts. We're talking about a team that strikes out so much, but who else could be a, a good option if it isn't Robert and the Mariners still need to get someone? I mean, is it Pete Alonso? You know, we're not talking great contact. He still strikes out. Um, but, uh, like, isn't Alonso the guy? Uh, they, they need slug. Yeah. Like it's it's not it, it's very simple to me. I look at I look at this 
roster and I look at this lineup and Cal Raleigh leaves the Mariners with a dozen home runs, I believe the next highest total is seven. Um, uh, you know, I think Cal Raleigh leads in runs batted in as well. I think the next highest total is Mitch Hanniger with 30. Uh, th- this is not a lineup that has enough pop in it, I think, to reasonably sustain itself throughout October. Now, you know, can they go on a heater? Yeah, they've, they've gone on one the last couple months. Um, they're just, I, I don't know, Mike, that there are going to be a lot of bats out there. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. 